Hey everybody, Neil here. I um, put out a tweet yesterday in regards to using uh, URL paths in um, bubble applications with, in conjunction with single page applications, uh, how to use uh, URL path segments as a list to navigate your single page application and maintain pretty URLs like you see here. Um, and being able to use those uh, path segments as a data source to be able to hide and show and do different things. Uh, I haven't gone too far on trying to filter off of that or anything. Um, this is not a replacement for um, parameters. Parameters are still very powerful and are great for filtering things, but if you're trying to keep pretty URLs, this seems to be a good solution. I do not take credit for this. Bubble does not document it well, I believe. But Eli Beachy put out a video on using URL paths um, to be able to natively um, do pretty URLs as well as um, use them to navigate your single page applications. And I hopefully will find that I can uh, do some filtering off of it. Uh, not sure yet, haven't gone that far, but please go watch Eli's video. It's about a 30 minute in depth uh, video that they did with pro no coders. Um, and he goes into more depth, but I'll quickly show you how I'm using it. Um, it's very simple, but it can be much more robust uh, in using dynamic data and things like that for your URLs. And, and Eli does a great job of doing an example of a blog uh, style type app of doing that. So um, um, thanks Eli for putting that out if you're watching this video. Um, I've always used Sudsy, which is great. I'm not um, deterring away from Sudsy as that has some great features as far as exposing uh, states on uh, URL changes, being able to access the URL path um, through element. Uh, I'm not sure if you can do that yet um, natively with the, the solution I'm about to show, but I will be trying it uh, and working with it more. But anyways, this is my new application Driftwind that I'm going to be launching soon that is for um, really any application, but predominantly bubble, bubble users to be able to send uh, user events and application activities from their application to Driftwind to be able to uh, see what users are doing in your application, like signups and clicks and logins and a whole bunch of other things that I've got planned for it and be able to take um, uh, uh, actionable steps based off of that data and, and engage with your users. So hopefully be releasing that soon. Um, this is not a demo of Driftwind. This is just kind of what my application that I'm building based on Eli's um, I guess tutorial or whatever you want to call it of using URL path uh, segments as a list. So let me go through it real quick. Um, you'll see here that I've got a URL or I've got a main navigation. I've got a real pretty URL up here. Uh, if this was a live, obviously version test would be gone. Main is the page that is going to be position one for your path list segment and I'll show you that in the editor. And this is position two activity, which is the view that we're showing right here. So let's check it out. So if I go to my main navigation, a look at one of these buttons that I've created here, you'll see, you will see that what I'm doing is just a simple get data from page URL. The type is now, instead of parameter or path, which you may be more accustomed to, is path segments as a list. And what that does is it basically takes that path and carves it up into a list of segments that you can access. So this would be segment one, which is position one, which is the page. This would be segment two, um, which is my view. I'm using it in my view. And if you had more, it'd be slash whatever arbitrary um, text next that would be um, position three and so on. So when you do this, it allows you to um, access these positions in your app as data sources. So, and I'm doing a just a simple conditional here on this. So if you do the get data from uh, past segments of the list, text, um, and then now this could be anything. This could be like a, an option set or whatever, but this is just plain text. Um, item number two. So I'm accessing item number two. This would be number two. Page is number one. 
is activity, then do this show this condition. So basically that's it. So when you when I navigate, when I go to segments, you'll see the uh, position number two and the path list segment change. Change to API, when I go to API, integrations, it goes to integrations. So when I go back here and I go look at my my view, I have a um, reusable um, page that I've created that I'm using as views pages in my uh, in my app, and I show this. So when I click on activity, this reusable page view is going to show. So same thing, get page URL item number two is activity, then show this uh, this page here. Um, so when I go back to, let me show you how this is being constructed and the URL is being placed into the, um, into the browser bar. So let me go back to navigation. Let me edit the workflow on this. So when button is clicked, it's saying go to page. So I'm going to the main page, which is itself because it's a single page application. And then I'm sending arbitrary text. And this is, again, I don't take credit for this. This is all Eli showed me how to do this. So I'm sending arbitrary text activity. So when that button's clicked, it's going to the same page itself, the main page, sending this text to the URL. That's how when I click this, it sends that arbitrary text to this position here. So, and I'm pretty sure you could extend this path any way you would like um, to work to fit your needs but uh, that's how I'm using it to, to create these nice, um, these nice pretty URLs. So that's, that's pretty much it. it. It's pretty powerful. Like I said, it prevents you from having to use a plugin, but I'm not sure how far it goes just yet. Um, I've got to play with it some more, but um, please watch Eli's video. It's more extensive. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ping me on Twitter. I'd be happy to try and help. Uh, but that, in a sense, allows you to do pretty URLs in a pretty easy way. Hope that helps, guys. Appreciate it. Bye.